hadn't said this is a gas engine truck, would you have noticed it? Not from the sound. Um, you know, not really so much being loaded and not really having, you know, having to deal with stopping and going and pulling some grades. But, but from the sound and the way it feels doing what we're doing, no, it feels basically like it's supposed to. So I've drove it, you know, with the diesel engine in this truck and with this natural gas engine. And I've drove it with 80,000 pounds, you know, both engines. I can't tell you a bit of difference in the power. I think the natural gas engine performs just as well as the diesel engine. The only drawback that I have noticed about the natural gas is not anything to do with the engine or the truck. It's just the amount of fuel stops. So if they build some more fuel stops, I, I, I don't know why they could go full blown with that instead of electric. What's driving it for 40,000 miles like? Well, if you get out on the road with it and you get in the headwinds, you know, coming from the east coast to the west coast, and I've driven across the country, I think, Lord, I don't know, seven or eight times now, uh, you can definitely feel a difference in the headwinds hitting, you know, versus that big square body trigger truck. Uh, with this, it feels like it hits you and it kind of pushes you down some, where in a, in, you know, it just kind of grabs and goes. But in a traditional truck, it's holding you back. I think the shape of the truck itself, no matter what kind of motor you got into, it's going to help the fuel economy. I'm sure a lot of truckers see it. So what, what kind of reaction do you get? Yeah, when you pull up, you know, it's kind of surprising. People come up and want to know if it's electric. They want to know if it's self-driving. It draws a lot of attention. You, you had mentioned, you know, the biggest difference being having to stop and get fuel and having to plant, you know, I guess fine. Yeah. How much of what you have to do, it just involves planning your route based on when you're going to get fuel, based on when you're probably going to need it. Well, it depends on where Shell has me go with this thing. You know, of course, down here on this southern side of the United States, there's not as many fuel stops uh, for natural gas. I think there's only three places in Alabama. If you go across the I-40 corridor, you don't have to plan much. You can stop. There's a lot of loves that has it, you know. Or, uh, you know, or some of the other truck stops do as well. We get nine miles per gallon on it. And that was loaded. Uh, we was pulling, I forgot what the exact weight was, but it was pushing 80,000 pounds. You'd already mentioned that the, pop, from the power differential from the diesel, you haven't really noticed much. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, it's got my full support. I, I, I'm a firm believer now. I, I wasn't before, you know, I was skeptical. Um, like I say, you know, going from diesel to a gas engine, I wouldn't have thought it would have. I, I didn't think it'd pull as good as it did or, uh, you know, get the fuel economy that it does, but it's just as good as uh, your trucks that's out there on the road. I mean, it gets just as many fuel miles per gallon as they do, but it's a lot cheaper, of course. Yeah. Um, so, power-wise, it's not lacking anything. I guess I'd start with a decade ago, uh, the differential in price between the amount of energy you could get in natural gas versus diesel fuel was really big. And so that's one of the things that made natural gas pretty attractive back in those days. Since that time, the price of diesel fuel came way down. The price of natural gas stayed about the same. So unfortunately, it made it economically not as, as attractive. But now, pressure on environmental regulations and things like that make natural gas a different alternative. It's not for everybody, but it's an alternative that may indeed make some sense to meet some of the environmental requirements that companies have. So you, you start with natural gas, it's basically methane. Chemical formula on that is CH4, right? Energy that comes from putting that in a, into an internal combustion engine is by separating those hydrogen atoms and matching them up with oxygen and making CO2 and then uh, the hydrogen matches up with oxygen and, and goes to water. So with diesel fuel, it's got a long chain of carbons and there's not as much hydrogen compared to the amount of carbon that's in there. So from a combustion efficiency standpoint, when it comes to carbon output, natural gas is better. And then with natural gas, you can also use renewable natural gas, which is then going to make your carbon burden from burning it a lot better than, it's, than it would be with diesel. From a, an overall emission standpoint, natural gas is much easier to deal with from an aftertreatment system than a diesel is. Diesels take selective catalytic reduction to reduce the NOx, an oxidation catalyst to manage the hydrocarbons, 
and a particulate filter to manage the soot that comes from the combustion process. Whereas a natural gas engine just uses a three-way catalyst, which is pretty common technology that's been used in automobiles for many, many years. So it's, it's something that's, that's much easier and less expensive than putting that fancy after-treatment system on a diesel. There's a decent bit of natural gas infrastructure that's already out there because there's been a good bit of investment with some private fleets as well as some companies that have put fueling stations out there for natural gas. With electricity, it's much harder because there simply aren't any charging stations to speak of out there today. That's improving pretty rapidly over time, but it's not there today. So there is a way to get natural gas in, in uh, a vehicle pretty easily. You can't fuel it quite as fast as a diesel fuel truck, but you can get closer. Electricity takes a lot longer time, so those are, those are all trade-offs that have to be made by the fleet. My opinion is natural gas is still going to be a product for fairly niche markets, fairly small markets. It's not going to be a huge part of the overall marketplace. Is it acceptable for a lot of applications? Yeah, it is. It'll, it'll work for a lot of applications, but uh, it's not going to work long term for a lot of applications. The uh, packaging of natural gas uh, tanks on a truck make it pretty hard to do a sleeper cab with all the tanks because of the space the tanks take up. So it's, it's a little bit harder to do really long haul transportation with, uh, uh, with natural gas. But sh short haul stuff, day cab kinds of things, yeah, it can, it can work pretty well.